in the beginning, it's like, oh, if I plan too far ahead, what if it doesn't work out? What I want to remind you is that your intention into action, it won't lead you in the wrong direction. You'll pivot. Whatever happens, happens, and you'll pivot as needed. And there's nothing wrong with like being a planner and planning ahead. Getting yourself in a position where you feel like, okay, this feels good. Because if you plan ahead, if you start thinking a little bit further into the future in your business, your content will become so much easier because you know what to talk about, you know how to talk about it because you know what's coming and you know what you want to share about. Welcome, Badass Manifester. I am so glad you are here. I'm your host and head coach, Ashley Gordon, master mindset and manifestation biz expert, founder of the Quantum Coaching Certification and multiple six-figure entrepreneur obsessed with empowering you to create quantum leaps in your energy, your life, and your business. This is the show to help you make magic your everyday normal, where the ripple effect is real and the guest experts are world class. My mission is to power your conscious and subconscious mind with manifestation teachings, business tools, and coaching techniques to put your potential into action. Consider this your weekly up level. Are you ready for quantum transformation? Let's do this. Oh, hey there. Welcome back. I'm so excited. Today we're going to be jamming all about just like a little update on life. I am preparing for maternity leave and I wanted to share about the maternity leave plan in general and just kind of share some behind the scenes of maybe some of the not so glamorous sides of business that you see everyone sharing about all the time because the reality is that business is not fucking glamorous all the time. So I want to just keep it real like I always do and just share a little bit behind the scenes of what's been going on, the transitions that our team is going through, and how we are preparing for maternity leave because maybe it will help you on your journey of growing your business and building your business and maybe one day prepping for your own maternity leave or any leave you want to take in business because it doesn't really matter. You want to have things in place. So let's just dive in. Um, So much has happened (laughs) in such a short period of time. Um, It's so interesting because in the beginning of the summer, I was talking to my friend and she was asking me, you know, what do I do in my business every day? And I said to her really proudly that I feel so lucky because I'm at a point in my business where I actually don't do that much. I actually don't have to do that much in my business. And I said, my team runs everything for me. And it's amazing. It's taken me so long to get to this point to have this solid of a foundation laid and just, you know, some of the things that it took to get us there. And so, or to get me there and us there. And so this summer, I was able to freaking chill, which was such a blessing. Like it really, really was because, um, you know, I really, as I've shared, I didn't feel super inspired. I was just really focusing my energy on allowing myself to just be, be in the moment, be present and give myself a a rest and also just focus on the life that I am creating right now. And that permission slip to myself ended up being a huge turning point of like all this inspiration coming in. And I think it kind of energetically triggered this like big transition that was about to take place um in the business that I didn't really see coming which I'll tell you more about but this summer all in all was just amazing I got to be with so many of my friends and family and just spend quality time and quality time where I didn't feel like I had to be doing or I should have been doing something else you know when you're busy a lot that feeling can come over you of like This is great and like I could be doing 10 other things right now, but I want to be with you. Like I want to be with the people that I'm with, but like you're distracted and I didn't feel that way at all. I just felt like, oh, just yes, I can be here in the now and it feels so good to just be present and I found so much abundance in the present moment and that was amazing. And so we started talking on the team about planning for maternity leave quite early uh, because things take time to plan 
and to figure out and to delegate. And so we started talking about it, I want to say, I don't know, I want to say like in May, we started planning out the maternity leave plan so that we could prep for it. And it's really an all hands on deck type of thing. There are so many moving parts inside of most businesses, especially ours. And so it was really important to figure out some of the key pieces that you know needed to be in place. And man, if you want to get stuff done in your house or you want to get stuff done in your business, just have a baby because it will force you to get things done. It motivates you like no other to just like get shit in order. My whole house is like, it's like I'm, I'm, I'm prepping, you know, I'm nesting big time. That's like a huge part of this. And so my attention is being pulled from like nesting and also like nesting in my business, you know, and like making sure that everything is, is good. I've never stepped away the way that I'm going to be stepping away. And yeah. Okay. So I don't, I don't really know exactly where to start with the maternity leave plan, but basically what we did was we outlined some of the big projects that had to be done before I left for maternity leave. So some of those projects included a new, we're creating a new website for Quantum Coaching Academy. We're creating a new sales page for Quantum Coaching Academy and we're bringing on a sales team. And so all those things needed to be, need to be done. And so they're in process now. Um, and um, something, there was other, there's a few other big projects. There's a big podcast project, right? Where I have to record a lot of episodes so that I can keep you listening to all the inspirational things while I'm away. And that's my plan. And we have a huge funnel project happening in the background. So there's many projects happening. And so we had to prioritize the projects and get those done first. And then basically what you have to do to prepare prayer for any type of leave is think ahead. You have to plan ahead. You have to look at the calendar way ahead. We had to get all of our launch schedules done way ahead of time. Everything for the next round of QCA, which starts in January, is basically done for onboarding because during that time, I'm going to be completely away. So I'll be coming back when we kick off that round. And so... We had to plan our schedules. We had to plan our launch schedule. We had to plan out our content strategy for all that time as well. And so basically, if you know where you're headed in your business, and this is planning for any like anything in your business, if you know where you're headed, you can work it backwards and say, okay, this is where we're going. What are every what are all the other pieces that need to be in place to get us there? And then once you have all those pieces in place, you then delegate those pieces. And that's a key component to getting things off of my plate. And I've gotten really good at delegating because my team, shout out Jenna, holds me accountable to delegation and not taking on too much and having the support in place who can handle it. So as far as, um, as far as like thinking ahead, launching ahead, prepping and everything like that we are on top of it like it is it's it's great and we've literally created a whole podcast plan of every single podcast that we want to have the topics for it all of it um out until like march pretty much i don't need to record um all of them till march but that's my goal So we'll see what happens, but everything is planned. And man, it does feel so good to have a plan in place. And so I would say if you're struggling in that aspect of your business of planning, have someone who you can plan with, right? Whether it's your coach or whether it's just a friend or someone that you can co-work with or trade like, hey, do you want to do a planning session? I'll help you plan. You help me plan and have them help you think ahead a bit. And then work it backwards of like, okay, what content strategy needs to be put in place with this plan? What podcast strategy needs to be put in place with this plan? What um, what tasks need to be delegated in order to bring this to life? What do you need to outsource in order to bring this to life? Kind of gets your juices flowing. 
So that's been a big thing. Another thing that we are implementing for maternity leave, which is really cool, um, and my my business manage, manager, um, I use for business management, online business management, we have, um, we are systems up. They're amazing. And they have implemented these like crisis scenarios, right? Like what happens if your website goes down? Who, like, because usually that would be like, call me, call me, right? But like, what's the plan? What happens if... Your Instagram gets hacked. What are the steps that someone on your team can take? What happens if your payment processor's down? So like these what if scenarios that can go wrong in business, what what do you do about it? You know, what can who can help you with that? What are the steps that that person can take? I'm really documenting it. Um, another thing that we did to prep, which I didn't know we would have to be do that we would have to be doing or do. We've had some team transitions. And so um, my online business manager who's on our team meetings every week, she's also pregnant and she just went on maternity leave. So someone new is taking her place on the team. So we're transitioning with a new online business manager. And my virtual assistant that has been with me for almost three years um, is transitioning. Well, she has transitioned off of the team. And this is very common. I think I'm going to record a podcast with her um, to share about our experience because I feel like this is something that nobody talks about, like the hiring and firing process and like things that come up and just things that you don't anticipate and like things that are uncomfortable. So basically, um, yeah, my VA, after a very long time of working together, um, decided to move on. And the, it was a really, it really was a mutual decision. I was already feeling it. I was already feeling like she kind of outgrew the position and, and it was time for her to transition off of the team. I just didn't think it would happen, you know, in August when we're so close to maternity leave, but it's actually a blessing because we have the time and space for um, us to train someone brand new to take over that position. And so that was really, really interesting. So August 15th, this all went down and it was very amicable. She left us in gr- in a great position. She made sure to train the new person as much as possible and also record SOPs. So if you don't have SOPs in your business, you really want to think about creating those because when you're training someone how to do something, you want to have standard operating procedures that someone new can follow. So what this looks like in an online business is a lot of video recordings on how to do this and how to do that. And each task has a video showing someone new exactly how to do something. And they're so important. And our goal was to always have those. And like our goal was that, you know, everybody would be recording SOPs all the time, but you get busy and doesn't happen. And so when this transition took place, my previous VA went and she recorded how she does everything, everything. So that, and then we have a, we have an SOP manual that's very organized of like things, you know, trainings for Kajabi, trainings for this system, trainings for that system, how to send this email, how to send that email, how to post in this group, how to do these payment things. And every single thing in the business is now recorded. And that is a freaking game changer because that means that you can hire someone that's a really good fit for the team, even if they don't know how to use Kajabi yet, because there's videos teaching them how to do every single thing that they need to do and they'll learn and they'll figure it out. So we hired someone new and we've been training her and she's been amazing and I will say during that transition period, uh, and we're still kind of in it because it's only September 7th and this happened, this all happened October, um, August 15th. I've worked more in my business <laughs> over the last three weeks than I have in like a year and a half. And it's great because I'm learning new things about the business. I'm learning how to integrate different things. I'm learning how to use Zapier. I don't even know how to use Zapier. I, I'm learning how to use things in my business that I did not know how to use before. I'm learning so much. And yes, was it stressful? 
100%. I was very stressed out and I was overwhelmed and I was overworking myself. And that's totally not where I want to be in my third trimester. I want to be chilling. And I needed to step up in order to get things to where they need to be so that I can fully step away. So I'm totally cool with it and things are kind of calming down now, which feels good. And the projects are all getting done and the funnel that we created is working and there's just so much good happening. All in all, it's been a great great thing. And what I want to say about the transition of one virtual assistant to another is that it's normal for people to grow and evolve in working with you. And that's essentially what happened is that she was just growing beyond the position and we had to work out a few things with our communication and other than that it was such a great experience because she helped us build the the program of QCA that we have today and it's been just so amazing so I'm so grateful for her and I'm so grateful for um just the the work that she's put in over the last few years and the way that she left us was in a really good position and I'm, I'm just genuinely grateful for that like you can have a really amicable split with someone um if you are a really good communicator as a leader so communication as a leader is so key it's so important it is so underrated things can't be um left unsaid that's that's really what it comes down to and so if I wasn't happy with something or if if something wasn't up to par I never had a problem saying it in a nice way I never had a problem expressing myself because I know that if I don't it's just going to hurt me and the business. So I have to get it out and I have to communicate and that's super important. So if you are struggling to communicate with your contractors that you're employing in any way, just know that you're really hurting yourself by not saying what your needs are. Because at the end of the day, this is your business and you have to run your business and it there was things that at towards the end that, that got to the point where I was like I can't run a business this way this isn't working for me and it wasn't working for her and we had to talk about it and that was it like we had to express it and let it out and then move forward and communication is key and communication isn't always comfortable that's what you have to understand it's not always comfortable to say how you feel but it will be worth it because If you don't, it's just going to eat you up inside. And that's not healthy either. In fact, it's probably more unhealthy than anything. So I learned so many lessons in the last like couple weeks um, in our prep for maternity leave and our prep for QCA launch that's coming up. So that's another thing that's coming up is the QCA launch. And um, people have asked me, are you able to like just chill in your third trimester? Are you able to like slow down? And I'm like, yeah, and we're launching. <laughs> we're launching, baby. Let's go. The launch is already going so well. We already have a lot of people that have been enrolled and we're it's early enrollment right now, if you didn't know that. And so I've been taking the application calls and I'm prepping um, a sales team because when we open applications to the public and we're publicly launching as opposed to like early enrollment launching I won't be able to take those calls so that was a big part of my plan was to have a team in place that can take those calls that can be really knowledgeable and helpful in answering everyone's questions that are inquiring about the program and want to get on application calls and apply because that's that's a step like when you apply to QCA, you get on an application call and you get on an application call with someone, with myself or someone on the team. And I really always pride myself in being able to take those calls because it means a lot to me to be able to meet every single one of our potential students. And I realize as I grow into motherhood, as I grow into the next level of this program and certification that we've built, 
as it grows in the number of students that we can hold and have capacity for, um, I won't be able to take all those calls and I have to be okay with that. And so that's another lesson that I'm learning in this transition and preparation is that I can't do everything that I've always done. And I have to be okay with that. I have to let go of control. (sighs) Letting go of control is so fun, isn't it? (laughs) It is so challenging to let go of control. And I don't care what, what, um, where you're at in your business, even if you're brand new or you're semi new and you're hiring your first virtual assistant, there's a lot of like letting go of control there too. A lot of trusting. Um, and the real way to scale your business is to outsource. It is to allow other people to step in for you to be able to take it, you know, where you want to go. And so that's been huge to like come to terms with that. And in the same breath, I'm attracting the most incredible people to help me. So for example, um, with the whole sales team process, I met this beautiful, amazing soul who has worked in sales for online businesses and courses for years. And she has been such a help to me. And then a student applied to QCA who has also worked in sales for really, really, really um, big, big producer in the online industry. And she's like, let me help you. Like, I want to help you with your sales team and your the whole thing and I'm like what like this is amazing I'm really attracting the way and so that's another beautiful thing that I'm realizing is that when you do start to let go when I do start to let go and I move in the direction that feels uncomfortable but necessary for the next level next version next iteration of what's to be and what's to become I'm attracting the people that I need to help me get to where I want to be and it's so empowering and it feels so supportive not just by these people but by the universe by God right it's like you're on the right track you're doing the right things everything is unfolding everything's happening trust it trust it trust it and so I'm really sinking into the next level of trust in my life next level of trust in my business the next level of trust in my marriage, the next level of trust, becoming a mom in myself, the next level of trust in the universe and God and angels and support. It's really cool. And and next level of trust in my team, right? Like there's a lot, there's a lot there and it's, it's all good. It's all good stuff. So that is like really the the recap, the short of it. And I hope it's helpful to hear this because it's kind of therapeutic just getting it out because I feel like there's so many lessons that aren't just for me, but also for you and things that hopefully you can implement in your business um, just by kind of thinking ahead and planning ahead and not being afraid to plan ahead. Because I think in the beginning, it's like, oh, if I plan too far ahead, what if it doesn't work out? And what I want to remind you is that your intention into action, it won't lead you in the wrong direction. You'll pivot. Whatever happens, happens. And you'll pivot as needed. And there's nothing wrong with like being a planner and planning ahead and getting getting yourself in a position where you feel like, okay, this feels good. Because if you plan ahead, if you start thinking a little bit further into the future in your business, um, your content will become so much easier because you know what to talk about. You know how to talk about it because you know what's coming and you know what you want to share about. So overall, my plan is to go on maternity leave November 1st. I should have said this in the beginning, but here we are. November 1st. Uh, My due date's November 16th. And what's really cool is that this round of QCA ends like right when I'm due. And... The next one doesn't begin till the till mid January, so this is just another piece I wanted to throw in. So, I purposefully created QCA and the team so that we have built-in breaks within the year because I knew that I wanted to have a little summer vacation from teaching and from the program, and I also knew that I wanted to have a little winter vacation from teaching and from the program, and so we 
have our launch calendar where our program ends right before Thanksgiving and it doesn't start until like two weeks into the new year. So we have like a two month break and then we have another two month break when the program ends in May and starts in July. And it's so great. It is so great because it fits my lifestyle. It fits the way that I want to live my life. And this baby is coming like right during that break. So it's just really divine that that is happening because so many people are like, well, how are you really going to take off? And da da da. And oh my God, you're going back so soon, middle of January after you give birth. But I'm not like going back, back fully. I'm going to show up on a call once a week and support QCA. So, of course, I'll be checking in, but I won't be working all day every day because I'll be with a newborn. And I can't wait to just, like, have nothing to do but take care of my child. It's going to be, like, the best feeling. Oh, he just kicked when I said that. (laughs) That's going to be the best feeling. So that's my plan. And I know that Todd wants to take off as well. I know he wants to take off. Um, The other day, I heard him say a month. We'll see. (laughs) He works in real estate, so he has flexibility as well. If he needs to run out and do something, he totally will be able to. Um, Part of our plan is also that we are going to be having a baby nurse, and that's going to be super supportive. Um, She is going to be living with us for about um, four to six weeks, depending, and um, she's going to be teaching us everything we need to know about babies. <laughs> it's just like literally everything. I'm so excited and so grateful that we are in a position where we could have a baby nurse and, um, she's get, just going to be staying with us and doing everything with and for the baby and showing us how to do it. So especially at night, she'll be, she'll be taking a lot of, of the load off where my plan is to breastfeed and, you know, it's an unpredictable thing. So I'm hoping that my milk flows easily and effortlessly and it's a beautiful experience. Um, and so basically like at night, if I breastfeed, she'll call me, I'll feed the baby and then she'll be able to burp the baby, change the baby, put the baby back to bed and I get to go back to bed too. And I, and I know that it's just going to make me a better mom during the day. So I'm really, really excited to have the support of a baby nurse, someone who is like a baby whisperer and knows how to get baby to sleep, knows how to get baby to calm, knows how to teach you to learn about your baby. And that's definitely part of our our maternity leave plan as well because um, a lot of my friends who have had baby nurses have said like, you have to have one. It's just, it's the, if you can do it so at first I was feeling like oh I don't want someone I don't want a stranger in my house all the time um that I don't know or like someone that this woman came so highly recommended from really close friends so I fully trust in that and then the first time I spoke to her it was just like a full body yes and I was like oh my god she's amazing her energy is amazing her or like everything about her was just amazing and I'm like this is it you're the one. Let's do this. So that'll be really supportive too in case I do need to step in at any point for work, but I don't plan on doing that. And then the other thing that we're doing for work is, before I for, totally forget to tell you this, is we're having someone on the team act as if they're me, right? So someone on the team will be making the decisions as if they are me and someone that I trust, right? Someone that I fully trust, someone that I um, fully trust in making those decisions. And then what we're going to be doing is we're going to be having a meeting on how to best make those decisions. And then even on our team meetings now, I'll just say, okay, I want you guys to pretend like I'm on maternity leave. How would you deal with this problem that showed up? Or how would you deal with this challenge that showed up? And they figure it out and, and they figure it out on the team meeting. So, and then I give them feedback on it, which Usually it's like, that's exactly what I would have done. Amazing work. Like, let's go. So having someone who can be you in a way and and think like you and make decisions like you is so key. And I'm so, so lucky to have someone on my team like that where they are totally willing and able to step in and be me and 
not be me, but like, you know what I mean, like make decisions as if they were me and feel like I can fully trust that because there's so many decisions to make in a business. There's so many every single day, you know, so I feel grateful to have that as well. So if you have the opportunity to implement that, that would be great. I think like the technical term for that person would be like integrator in your business, someone who's integrating the projects and taking the lead and making sure that everything's moving forward. So yeah, having that person is going to be so key. Um, and, and it's very clear because everyone that comes to me for things right now on the team will then go to that person. And so everything is just properly delegated and then making sure that like when you go into your project management system like if you have Asana or Slack or ClickUp but when you go into when we go into ClickUp all of my tasks anything that I have to do daily weekly or monthly are all delegated to someone else to do and so the goal is is that everybody on the team knows exactly their role and how to move it forward and it's clear if everyone has a clear role, that's super key. Okay, the last thing that we're implementing, that we have implemented, are KPIs. I, I'm thinking of this like as, as I'm speaking. I'm not, I didn't actually write any of this out. But KPIs are key performance indicators. So for example, for the new VA, like if our key performance indicator is like, you know, getting the inbox to zero every single day. That's, a, that's like a key indicator that you're doing a good job. And so having key performance indicators for every single person on the team, making sure things are getting done in a timely fashion and the way that we want them and the expectation that we want them done in, you can then review that with your team and say, okay, you've met these KPIs, but you haven't met these. So what's getting in the way? And it's very black and white and it's not – there's not really a lack of communication or like a lack of, well, there might be a lack of communication, but there's not really a lack of, um, there's no gray area because they know going into their job, like this is what's expected of them and they either hit it or they don't. And so then you get to talk about it and see what got in the way and then see how you can help them or take things off their plate or whatever right or adjust accordingly so that's been another really important thing that we have implemented that I highly recommend putting into your team structure it's amazing there it's been amazing to have KPIs <sighs> okay I think that's it um just a reminder we are enrolling early right now early enrollment for the quantum coaching academy the wait list is open and if you're on the wait list, you have the opportunity to save $1,000 on your tuition or $1,500 off of your tuition if you pay in full for the program. So the best thing to do is get on the wait list and you'll have an opportunity to apply early to the program and um, uh, baby brain moment, <laughs> pregnancy brain moment. <laughs> So apply early to the program and get yourself your seat. We start in January. And there are a lot of benefits in enrolling early, such as we have a business mastermind that is part of the program. You'll get a lot of extra months of that when you enroll now. You'll also receive access to your manual. You will be able to go through all of the pre-study content and start implementing it. And you'll be able to get a really big head start on the program. And you'll get a really nice discount off of your tuition, which I know some of you have been thinking about QCA for quite some time. Let's kick off 2023 becoming a world-class certified coach. Like, yes, 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 yes. So good. Okay, also last, last thing. We have another podcast. I know I told you this before. We launched another, another podcast. It's called become the best coach podcast it's a 10 episode podcast it will teach you everything you need to know about the quantum coaching academy plus a lot of good coaching tips and tools are in there so if you want to learn more and you want to dive deeper and you want to hear about it before you apply the link to that podcast is in the show notes here it's also in my instagram bio so go check it out i'm really excited for you to do that and I would love your feedback on it. 
We've gotten amazing feedback on it. So please let me know what you think. And I hope you enjoyed this episode. Thanks for bearing with me. I have baby brain. I'm a little all over the place, but I think I got it all out. I hope it was helpful. And I would love to know what resonated the most with you as always. So feel free to message me on Instagram. And if you have any questions, I'm here to answer them. So reach out, reach out, email us, message me on Instagram, whatever, whatever feels good. I am wishing you an amazing transition into September. I was going to say February. (laughs) Wow. I am wishing you an amazing transition into September, wherever you're at. Maybe your kids are going back to school. Maybe you're starting something brand new. Maybe you're embarking on something brand new. Maybe you're starting your business. Whatever it is, maybe you're not doing anything new, but the season is changing. Wishing you a beautiful transition into this time. And I will see you next week on the pod. Talk to you then. Woo! We did some work today. Thank you so much for listening. You know I love my BAM fam. If this episode resonated with you, please share it with someone who you know would love it too because we live for the ripple effect over here. And how can you best support the show? Make sure you're subscribed, hit the five stars, and leave a review on iTunes and let me know how the podcast has impacted you. I love being part of your real-time journey, so screenshot the episode and tag me and my guests on Instagram at manifestwithash. Now say it with me. I am my own power source. I am the master of my own energy, and I deserve everything that I desire. We don't just talk about it over here. We be about it. Now go get them.